Hey guys, what's up? This is Derek with omgitsderek.com and today I'm going to walk you guys through the best streaming settings for OBS Studio, uh, whether you're live streaming to Twitch, YouTube, doesn't matter which service you're using. If you want to get 1080p, 60 frames per second, the best quality possible, this is the video for you. The reason I decided to make this video is because, uh, you know, I constantly every couple months look up videos on the best OBS settings myself because I like to make sure that I'm streaming at the best settings after there's been multiple updates to OBS and stuff. And one thing I noticed when I was watching a lot of videos, even some of the videos that have the most views, like 250,000, 500,000 views, is a lot of times the information they're giving them is just flat out false. And I'm not, you know, personally tagging anybody, I'm not calling anybody out, nothing like that. Just saying that a lot of it's false. So I decided I wanted to create this video and actually explain to you guys each section that these guys that you always see people talking about and hopefully that'll help you make the best choices for yourself i will say that unless you have really good internet and a really good pc you're not going to be able to run the settings that i show you that i'm running at. with that said hopefully by explaining to you each section you'll be able to then adjust from my settings to find settings that work best for you in the setup that you have so let's go ahead and jump right in and we're going to click on our settings for OBS and we're going to start right here under video. So the first thing that you want to set is your base resolution. This is set at whatever your desktop is set at. So if you have a 4K display and you're set up at 4K, you want to make sure you're selecting 4K for this base resolution. Like myself, I'm set up at 1080p, so I want to select 1920 by 1080. Now also, there's normally talk about uh, scaling your resolution. You might want to scale down to 720p because uh, you don't have the internet speed or the hardware in order to do 1080p. Uh, so a lot of people will tell you to adjust this in your output settings under your streaming section here. Right here, there's a checkbox, rescale and scale here. It's actually best to set your output scaled resolution in this setting uh, as it'll give you a better result. So here, if you do need to go down to 720p, that's where you can go. But if you wanna get the best bang for your buck, if your PC and your internet can handle it, then we're gonna leave this at 1080p. For your downscale filter, uh, if you're not downscaling, this won't matter much. If you are downscaling, you wanna make sure you select the best setting, the best sharpening scale at 32 samples. That's gonna just give you that extra little bit of quality that you know, all these little itty bitty steps make a huge difference. And then last and not least, you wanna select the frame rate. If you're going for 60 FPS, which is you know really great for high action games, you know, first person shooters, things like that, that's what I stream in. Even if I'm streaming a game like League of Legends where I probably don't need 60 frames per second, I still just do it because I have the internet speed and the PC uh, hardware to handle it. Uh, if you don't, and again, you can drop down to 30, but the best settings you're going to get is if your, your, scale, your output resolution is 1080p and you're doing 60 frames per second. After we do that, we're going to go ahead and jump over to output. And most people will be set initially on the simple mode. You want to change to advanced, which gives you more settings. Um, and then first and foremost, under your encoder here, you'll see this mentioned between a lot of people. A lot of people will tell you that if you have AMD, it'll show up as this, H264 slash AVC encoder. If you have an NVIDIA graphics card, uh, it'll show up as like HVEC or something like that, or you'll have X264. If you choose the top one, it's going to use your graphics card to do all the encoding. And if you use the bottom one, it's going that just the normal X264, it's gonna use your processor, your CPU, to do all the encoding. You'll hear a lot of people say that you'll get better quality if you go with using your graphics card. Uh, however, from my testings, and you know, all I can tell you guys is from my testings, but from my testings, I don't know where this comes from, but it's not true. Most video games do not use your processor that much. Most video games are using your graphics cards to 100%. Unless you're capping your frame rates in game or something, your graphics card is being used 100% to produce as many frames per second as possible in a video game. Your processor is not being used by most games. There's exceptions to that. Some games are really highly uh, CPU intensive, 
Most games are not. So from my experience, actually using the processor to do the encoding, unless for, again, this is talking best settings. If you can't hand, if your processor can't handle doing the encoding, you may have to use your graphics card. But again, a lot of people in this space are saying the graphics card is gonna give you better performance, better quality. From my experience, from all the testing I've done, from all the people I've talked to, that's just not the case in real world. Again, maybe specific game, you'll get better with the encoder or if you have a shitty CPU. But we're talking about the best quality settings in this video and the best quality I believe is just using your processor for the encoder. Again, you don't wanna reskill your output here. It's better to do it under the video tab in this section. So we're gonna leave that unchecked, even though a lot of people will tell you to real scale here. Again, from my experience and from my testing, uh, it seems like you get a lot better of a, of a scale if you are downscaling by doing it in this spot instead of this spot. I honestly can't tell you the exact reason why, uh, but it's just always been the truth. If you are streaming at 1080p, 60 frames per second, you wanna set your bit rate at 6,000. Again, a lot of people will say, if your internet can't handle that, you know, do 4,500, do 5,000. But again, if you're wanting the best quality you can get out of 1080p, 60 frames per second, you should be streaming at 6,000 bits per second. If you can't handle that, if you have to drop down to 4,500, 5,000, you may be better off going down to 30 frames per second instead of 60 frames per second. Now, that doesn't mean you can't stream 1080p at 60 frames per second at 5,000, but again, a lot of people make it sound like it's really not gonna make that big of a difference when it comes to your uh, video quality, but that's just not true. It will make a huge difference. If you're doing 60 frames per second at 1080p, you should be trying to hit 6,000 kilobytes per second. In my opinion, if you cannot hit 6,000 doing 60 frames per second, you'd be better off downscaling to 720p, 60 frames per second, and then going with like 4,500, 5,000 kilobytes per second. Keyframe interval should be set to two. Zero is the auto, but almost every service you stream to, Twitch, YouTube, they all require a keyframe interval of two. So it's better to just set that. That way you don't have to worry about it not being correct. CPU usage preset. A lot of people tell you that you can change this if you go down and that'll give you better quality. That's very true. However, increasing this past the default very fast, most of the time just ends up causing more problems than, than giving you any additional quality that really makes real world sense. Uh, so in my opinion, you may wanna try to go to faster. If you have a separate streaming PC and you're using like a capture card or something to, to hook your first PC into a second PC, and that second PC is dedicated strictly for streaming, then you may be able to definitely turn this up some and get some better quality. But overall, if you know most people are streaming on the same PC that they're gaming on, it's best not to mess with this. For the difference that you'll get in quality, it really doesn't make that much of a difference. For profile, I see a lot of people skip this or they'll say set it to main or baseline. But if you set it to high, it's gonna give you that little bit of extra and it doesn't really take any more resources Last but not least, and a lot of people skip this step too, but it's also very important, is under advanced, under the video section here, the color format you wanna make sure is set to NV12. The color space you wanna, is, is, you ha is default to 601. You wanna change that to 709, which is Rec 709. This is, the, uh, this is the part that tells monitors how to display your colors. The newest standard is 709, and while it may not actually increase the quality of your stream, it'll increase the compatibility on monitors of your screen, and it's best to use that same version that all computers, manufacturers, televisions, monitors, they're all using that Rec. 709 nowadays, and for the color range, the default's partial, you wanna go full. It'll just give you the fullest color range so that if people have the displays to see it, they get better colors, better contrast ratios, all of that, it's definitely worth changing. It doesn't really change anything uh, in terms of how much usage you're gonna, your hardware is gonna have to use for it. Last but not least, this is a personal preference. It doesn't have anything to do with really the quality, 
But a lot of times when you're when you're streaming at 1080p, 60 frames per second, when you're loading games and stuff, it can cause your OBS to hang up a little bit. The process priority for OBS by default is set to normal. I actually increased mine to above normal, which gives it just a little bit more priority when it comes to my CPU than a game or something. I don't mind my game hanging up for a second versus my OBS hanging up for a second. All right, guys, and that should give you guys the best possible settings at 1080p, 60 frames per second. Again, if your internet can't handle it, your PC hardware can't handle it, you may have to downscale, you may have to go to 30 frames per second, you may have to use a lower bit rate, but changing those things will not give you the best possible, uh, uh, the best possible quality like a lot of people still claim it will by doing all this other magical stuff. You have to hit all those things and have them set to that to get the best quality. That's just how it is. Um, again, if you can't, you know, then you can down, but don't try to do 1080p, 60 frames per second at 4,000 bit rate, 4,500 bit rate on a computer that just can't handle it, or you're gonna end up producing a stream that you're trying to make high quality look like shit. You're gonna be much better off realizing your internet or your PC can't handle that and drop in your settings than trying to finagle the software to get yourself to be doing 1080p 60 frames per second. All right, guys, I hope that helps. If you have any questions at all, I'm happy to, to, to answer them. I'm happy to help in any way that I can. Just leave a comment below. And uh, I always check comments, always respond to them. So again, just leave a comment below. I'll be happy to help as much as possible. If there's something I said that you disagree with, leave a comment below and tell me why. I'm all, just like you guys, I'm always learning as well. Um, you know, but again, just from my years of messing around with OBS, streaming, recording videos, these are the best settings I've found for 1080p, 60 frames per second. Peace out, guys. Until next time.